Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I have the OCZ Vector 256GB SSD. I'm going to be taking a closer look at this SSD, its construction, as well as some benchmarks. Let's start off with a closer look at the retail box and actually a little bit more about OCZ for right now because OCZ is sort of refocusing their focus, so to speak, when it comes to SSDs in particular. Uh, they're going to be doing fewer product releases, so they're going to be narrowing down their product line, but they're going to be focusing on more testing, more validation of the drives that they sell in order to verify long-term compatibility and reliability. To that end, Vector is being sold with a five-year manufacturer's warranty with OCZ, or directly from OCZ, and um, basically for five years, as when it comes to the total uh, available reads and writes available on the actual NAND on this drive, you could essentially be writing 20 gigabytes of data per day to this drive for five years, and you will never uh, actually hit that limit until then. And 20 gigabytes per day is just way, way more than the typical home user would ever actually write. So you should have some really long-term reliability for this drive. Uh, apart from that, let's talk a little bit more about the construction and the technology. You'll notice up here it says Indolinks Infused. OCZ acquired Indolinks uh, a few years back, and they've been working with them uh, to enhance some of the firmware for some of their drives. This is actually the first drive that's using both firmware as well as hardware completely designed in-house by OCZ. This is going to be using the Indolinks Barefoot 3 controller. Some more on that in a few minutes. Apart from that, uh, some basic specs here. SATA Revision 3 compatible, and you would definitely want to use a SATA Rev 3 connector. More ideally, a native SATA Revision 3 connector if you want to hit the performance that this drive is capable of. Uses MLC flash memory, so uh, MLC memory is what's used in the vast majority of consumer available SSDs these days. As mentioned, the Indolinks controller have, of course, support for trim and compatible operating system environments, such as Windows 7 or Windows 8. Uh, you get a 3.5 inch adapter, also comes with some imaging software for Macronis, True Image HD software, so you can more easily transfer an existing uh, operating system install to this SSD, for example. A little bit more information on there on the back, as well as some statements from OCZ, but next up, let's just take a look inside the box. Okay, so inside the box, first off, packed in very tightly, we have a 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch uh, adapter. And uh, that's simply so if you have a case that doesn't have a 2.5 inch drive mounting point, you can mount the SSD to this, mount this into your case, and that should fit in most 3.5 inch standard drive cages. Apart from that, we have, of course, the SSD itself. We have a code here on the back of this. That's the activation key, which I'm going to kind of cover up. That's, your, that's uh, the software I mentioned from Acronis. So you can use the activation key to download the software to help uh, image the drive if you're going to be uh, doing an upgrade, for example. We also have, of course, your installation manual right here, uh, installation and laptops, basic warranty information as mentioned, multiple languages covered in there. Here's some screws for that drive uh, bay adapter so you can mount the SSD to the cage or to the adapter and then mount the adapter to your drive cage. The SSD, of course, and then finally, we mustn't forget, look, it's a new SSD sticker from OCZ. It's I heart my SSD, a little SSD, a little OCZ logo. Next we'll take the Vector out of its anesthetic bag. Let's talk about the rated speeds from OCZ that this drive is intended to hit. So sequential read, 550 megabytes per second. Sequential write, 530 megabytes per second. These are pretty high-end uh, speeds that are listed by OCZ. Also for random reads, it should be able to do 100,000 input-output operations per second. For random writes, 95,000 input-output operations per second. And then this is a low power drive. It's going to be running at 2.25 watts when it's under load and 0 0.9 watts when it's on standby. So taking a look at the drive, it feels actually fairly dense. So it feels like very good build quality um, from OCZ. As you can see, you got a pretty simple uh, silver housing. The Vector logo and OCZ logo and Indolinks logo here on the front with a uh, sticker that's covering pretty much the entire top of the drive. This drive is only 7 millimeters thick, so top to bottom, which means it should be compatible with some Ultrabook specifications that require slightly thinner drives. Uh, a lot of drives will be 9 millimeters and 9.3 millimeters high. Here on the back we can see the standard OCZ logo, uh, your serial number and uh, part number, of course. Uh, you get a little QR code to scan there. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, warranty void if removed sticker. I'm going to be voiding the warranty on this drive in just a moment so I can take it apart and show you guys the inside. Don't take uh, SSDs apart unless you're okay voiding your warranty. And this is a very generous warranty, as mentioned, five years from OCZ. So uh, definitely don't want to waste that if you can avoid it. Finally, uh, serial ATA connectors here. We have the power connector on the left, data connector on the right. 
So four screws off of the top, you can remove this plate. Bear in mind there is some thermal tape down there at the bottom. Don't lose that. Well, you shouldn't be doing this anyway. You can just watch me, I'm doing it. Because that is actually making contact with your uh, Indolinx Barefoot 3 controller, which is located right there at the center. And although I did take some of the uh, printing off of it, the specific model of this is IDX 500 M00 BC. That's Barefoot Controller. And uh, as you can see, well, let me just lift out the actual PCB here. So you can see the very sturdy housing that OCZ has made for the vector. And then uh, we can see the uh, controller, which is right there. We can see some DDR3 cache chips. There's one on either side. And then, of course, all these OCZ logoed packages right there is all of your NAND flash memory. Um, now, a little bit more on the Barefoot 3 controller right there. This is actually designed in-house by OCZ. So they're uh, trying to get to the top-to-bottom manufacturing process for uh, their SSDs. Uh, the only thing they're really not manufacturing in-house here is going to be the actual uh, NAND wafers there, but they do package them themselves, which is why they have OCZ logos on those. Uh, but the Indolink Barefoot 3 controller has an ARM Cortex processor, also has an OCZ Aragon coprocessor, also has a DRAM cache controller, because uh, unlike some of OCZ's previous SSDs, which use Sandforce controllers, which uses part of the NAND for cache, we have uh, distinct NAND, uh, I'm sorry, we have distinct DDR3 cache chips on here. Speaking of which, it's DDR3 1600 to 256 megabyte uh, chips on either, one on either side, so you get a total of 512 megabytes total cache for the drive. And then, of course, you have all of your NAND chips uh, total via the 8 uh, on either side gives you 256, I'm sorry, yeah, 256 gigabytes total raw capacity. And when you format the drive in Windows, you're going to get 238 gigabytes usable capacity, and the NAND is MLC synchronous 2-bit per cell NAND 25 nanometer IMFT, uh, so Intel Micron Flash technology, uh, and that is some pretty high quality NAND. Uh, the 25 nanometer process is going to mean the durability is a bit higher on that, so that's why they're uh, thinking they, uh, that's why they're providing a five-year warranty for this drive. And uh, next up, since we've looked at the internals, let's go ahead and take a look at some benchmarks. Next up, I have some benchmarks for you guys here. So first off, let's take a look at the configuration for the system. And I apologize, I was on a much larger monitor when I took these screenshots. Okay, uh, we're using an Intel Core i5-3570K processor. We're on an Asus Maximus 5G motherboard. So that's Z77 chipset. We're connecting to the native uh, Serial ATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second controller. Uh, that's part of that chipset. So there's say to transfer rate 6 gigabits per second. And uh, with that configuration, also memory is running at 2666. So let's take a look. We'll start off with Atto because that's a very popular benchmark that's actually used by a lot of SSD manufacturers to demonstrate the uh, speeds of their drive. It's been around for quite some time. I ran it at a couple different Q depth settings. And um, maybe just a moment to arrange these properly for you guys so you can sort of do a side by side comparison. All right, so on the left, we have Q depth four which is sort of a more reasonable standard Q-depth um, for testing the drive at, which is a little bit more in line with uh, what you would see in, in typical day-to-day day -day use. Usually a typical day-to-day -day computing use, you're not going to get above Q-depth of maybe one to three. Uh, but here on the left side, we can see we're testing a bunch of different transfer sizes. So um, as the drive has more data to work with, it can actually achieve more of its actual speed capabilities. Uh, and then here we can see the writes and the reads. So at Q-Depth 4, we actually hit uh, max write of about, oh, let's see, 535 megabytes per second. Uh, maximum read was about 557, yep, 557 megabytes per second right there. Uh, when we bumped up to Q-Depth of 10, we saw pretty much the same performance. Again, 535, 557 respectively. So um, uh, we're actually able to see the drive hit most of its uh, speed, even at a, at a lower Q-Depth. But there's your Atto benchmark results. Next up, uh, I did run PC Mark 7, which is uh, a suite. This is actually the storage suite for PC Mark 7. So there are the results down there in the lower left. Uh, storage score 54, 52, and then this runs a set of uh, benchmarks to sort of emulate different uh, different types of computing scenarios, such as Windows Defender, importing pictures, video editing. There are all the results right there, and um, it's I know it's hard to tell without a direct comparison up here next to it, but these are all very good numbers. And if you do have PC Mark 7, you can run this on one of your uh, SSDs or one of your drives you have available, and sort of give yourself a comparison right there. Uh, next up, I also ran Black Magic which is a disk speed test, uh, which run, which basically uh, gives the drive a quick test, 
to determine uh, write and read performance. And you can see we had just about 500 megabytes per second on the write, 507.4 megabytes per second on the read. And then this will sort of determine if this is a uh, drive that's capable of handling uh, video tasks at different levels of compression and different um, uh, levels of uh, detail. And actually, pretty much everything got the, uh, the green check mark for the OK, except for some really uh, high resolution 12 bits, like 50 frames and, and 60 frames per second 1080 video. But uh, very good performance for this drive, very good results from disk speed tests. Next up, I'm going to talk about Crystal Disk Mark and ASSSD because these uh, benchmarks, uh, they've been around for a while and uh, they're a little bit more specifically geared towards testing SSDs. Uh, so first off, here's ASSSD, and uh, look at that! Look at that overall score, 1209 for a single drive. That's that's kind of out of the ballpark right there. And ASSSD really likes uh, good write performance. It also seems to really like really high input/output operations per second. Uh, again, this is the same test, just megabytes per second on the right, IOPS on the left. And you can see with our 4K tests, we hit 97,600 IOPS, 85,600. Just some pretty crazy uh, results and, and numbers here. If you guys want to look at any of my other SSD tests, you can see that these charts are, are, are really good performance for this drive. Uh, 458 and 510 were the scores for reads and writes, respectively. And access time, look at that, less than 0.1 milliseconds for both reads and writes, 0.3 and 0.029 milliseconds access time. And that's uh, one of the key features of an SSD is the fact that there's no moving parts, which means that uh, it can quickly access the data, get you on your way. And that's why when you install an SSD, especially for your operating system, you will almost instantly realize this is just a much faster, more responsive computing experience. Uh, here's the ASSSD copy benchmark, so ISO programming game. This is, again, sort of simulating some uh, more common use case scenarios like you would for day-to-day -day use. 286, 233, 252 megabytes per second, respectively, for those three tests. Finally, we have a compression benchmark. And as this uh, controller doesn't necessarily perform on-the-fly compression, we're going to see a really stable results right up here at the top. So um, there's no need for compression. Down here at the bottom, between 0 and 100% compression, it's running this test. And as you can see, stable the entire time, uh, just about just under 500 megabytes per second for write, and uh, just over 500 megabytes per second for the read, actually 517-ish. Uh, next up, we're going to verify those results from ASSSD, and we're going to do that with Crystal Disk Mark. So here are my Crystal Disk Mark benchmark results. Uh, so the test in megabytes per second on the right. Uh, and again, this is just sort of verifying our Crystal Disk Mark, I'm sorry, our ASSSD test. 524, 550 megabytes per second for sequential reads and writes. Uh, 4K tests are something you should really pay attention to if you're looking at SSDs because this is much more typical for day-to-day -day computer use. And if you have really good results in your 4K tests, then you know that when you install this SSD in your home system, you're going to get much better response time and just overall, again, a much faster and snappier computing experience. Here's input-output operations per second for those last two tests listed over here on the left side. And we can see, again, at 97,000 and 91,000, just, just shy of 92,000, respectively. So um, hitting right up to, maybe if not exactly, as the 100,000 and 95,000 IOPS as listed um, by uh, OCZ. But uh, again, with some tweaking and everything, we could probably hit that if necessary. This, these are just more, I just plugged in and ran, and ran these benchmarks. Uh, we also ran this, uh, again, as mentioned, in compressible uh, data. So this is, this is using compressible data. And again, since the controller isn't performing on the fly compression, we just see pretty much stable results um, from the both incompressible and compressible data tests. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the OCZ Vector 256 gigabyte version here, also available in 128 and 512 gigabyte capacities. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.